Hi there, uh, welcome to the second video of our little mini-series on GeoPandas. Today we're going to be looking at a new topic which is reading geospatial files into the GeoPandas library. So to do that we're going to start doing practical work, no more slides for the time being. We will do a bit of reading but we'll just do some practical work. This is a Jupyter Notebook environment and that's a very good envi environment for a data scientist or an urban analyst or a GIS analyst to work with data and to visualize and, and interpret results. So we're going to work with Jupyter and we're going to look at reading in different geospatial file formats. We mentioned some in the last lecture. We've got shape files, we've got uh, GeoJSON objects, GeoJSON um, files, and we have other types as well like OpenStreetMap files. So I have a Jupyter Notebook open, as I said, and we're importing two libraries here, uh, GeoPandas, which we're going to use, and we're importing Pathlib, which actually is part of the Python standard library. We'll come back to that in a second. So GeoPandas, just to read the slide a bit, read the, the notebook, it makes it trivial to read common vector-based spatial data formats, including shapefiles and GeoJSON files. So there's a single function in GeoPandas that um, enables you to do this and that's the read file function. This is a file that's similar to some of the functions you might have seen in Pandas itself. Pandas allows you to bring data in from different sources like Excel spreadsheets with the read Excel file, uh, sorry, read Excel function, the read JSON function if you have a JSON data source, read CSV and read pickle and there's, there's actually loads of these in Pandas. So we have this read file in GeoPandas and when you call that it returns a geodata frame object which we said before is a subclass of the pandas data frame. Under the hood this is actually um, passing the arguments you provide to it to um, the library Fiona. Fiona has is an IO library for um, vector files and it has an open method similar to the Python um, built-in open method and that allows you to read in these vector files and GeoPandas gives you this easy way to interface with Fiona. You don't even need to know about it really. So we're going to focus on shape files in this particular class and I'm going to click this link here um, and we're going to read up on shape files. Um, this is the bit I want to, to focus in on. The, the shape file is actually a grouping of several different file formats or s several different files. So you have a .shp, that's the key file. It is um, a shape format, that's actually got the, the vector geometry itself. shx, that's a shape index format. Um, and you have a .dbf, which is attribute format, and that contains sort of auxiliary attributes that are attached to the geographical data. Um, so we're gonna have a look at how we read that in, in uh, GeoPandas. So I've set up a path to a file. I have downloaded a shape file containing of the, the 50 American states, the US states, and we want to read that into a geodata frame. So I'm going to call the, the function we mentioned up there, it's called read file, and we'll pass the file uh, path in, and we should get back. Um, I need to do the imports first, that's a key step. Um, we should get back a geodata frame here. Um, and my bad, bad start here. It's actually GPD for GeoPandas. So if we call read file, finally we do get the data frame and you can see that the geometry column contains the actual shape objects, the polygons, and in some cases, multi-polygons. Um, so you might have a multi-polygon if a state is split between um, maybe different, there, maybe there's boundaries between the state and it has to be represented by more than one polygon. Um, so that's given us a representation of that. So if I store that in a GDF, a Geo Data Frame object, um, let's do some more operations on the data. Um, what I'm going to do now is just show you that you can actually do standard Pandas Data Frame operations, like get the head, which is the first five columns, or you can pass a number in there to get the first two. Um, and what we can do is we can do slices. We can get a particular column. I might be interested in the, the state name. So I can index in there and get the state name that returns a series object. And then you can do anything you want with that. Um, you can also get more than one column at a time. So maybe I want the, the state code as well. 
So I'm doing that sort of um, indexing into the columns where I pass an actual list here of different columns I want to index. And to get the actual geometry column, I can just do um, GDF geometry and I get the geometry objects and I can call things like area, uh, there, there are attributes such as area, which will tell you the areas of some of these geometry objects. I'm not sure what the units are, but we're going to come back to this in a different video. Um, so that's how you do reading in of a shapefile. That is how easy it is to read a shapefile that you get. Um, with all those different associated file formats, um, we read that in and we have then a data frame which we can use for manipulation, for cleaning, for plotting and all other so all sorts of other analytics tasks. So now I'm going to show you something a bit different. Um, you can also read in uh, zip files. So if we set up a path to, I've got a zip file, I'm just going to copy this path um, here and I'm going to explain the syntax. So we have a zip file here um, that is also in this data directory that I have. And we have an exclamation mark, uh, which means this is sort of boundary uh, character here. And then we have the actual link to the same shape file we specified up here. So we don't actually need to unzip the, the shape files that we have. We might just want to um, read them in directly to save a bit of memory um, or to save a bit of disk space rather than reading um, from. So we just basically keep the zip file around and we can call um, the same function that we called up there, the geopandas.readfile function, we can pass in our new f, I'm just going to call this f2, just to prove that it's different. Oh, and we have another error, okay. Um, let me just see, ah, now the problem I've got here, my apologies for this, um, you actually need to specify that it is a zip, um, sort of, that's kind of like the, you would you would call you'd use PostgreSQL to, to connect to a Postgres database. It's the sort of format that you're expecting. So it's a zip format, and then we use an F string in Python to um, embed this path object in there, and that should do the trick. That should be able to read that in again. And you see we get the same result as we got before, but we didn't actually need to unzip the states file. So that's just showing you that you can actually read in zip files as well as shape files um, and that's also possible with GeoJSON as well. We can also pass URLs. I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video when we look at GeoJSON and look at the structure of GeoJSON. Just as a final task here I'd like to um, I'd like to maybe uh, show you something quite cool. I'm going to try what what GeoPandas allows you to do is pass a bounding box to the read file function. Now I'm going to make that more clear with this example here. I've got these coordinates. This is a box, a bounding box object. Actually, just a Python tuple, but we can use it to filter out the um, the, the actual results that we get when we call read file. Now I think it's easiest to show that with an example. So I'm just going to copy this function up here. It's going to be the same function. But I'm going to pass a bbox per um, keyword argument to this read file function. And we're going to say, we basically we want this to only return the states that are kind of in New England. Now I'm not American, but I think these are pretty much the New England states. And the key coordinates are these two. This is like bottom left of New York state, I think. And anything ab uh, above that and to the right is in America is going to be returned in this bounding box. So if we look at what this does, we, we hope that it's going to filter out all states that are not intersecting this box. So it's an intersection operation. Any state that doesn't intersect the bounding box will be filtered out of the GeoPandas data frame. So let's see the in action. We see we get a lot less rows than we got Previously, we have the same columns but less rows. And if you look at the state names, we see that we only have these states that are in sort of the northeast of the United States of America, um, the New England sort of area. Um, so any state that intersects this bounding box that you can pass to the read file function will be returned in this, this data frame. So that's a very good way to filter out stuff that you might not need if you're focusing in on a particular geographical location. And one very last thing I want to do here is just show you that GeoData Frames, if I look at the geometry column, geometry 
I can actually plot that out. Um, now this is using um, matplotlib under the hood, but it's plotting out the New England region of the United States of America. If I remove the bounding box parameter, we'll get the whole of the USA. And then when I call plot to that, we get the whole of the United States, including Alaska and Hawaii. So that's just showing you that with one call to the plot function, just like a pandas data frame, if you use plot on a geometry column, it will try and plot out the um, it will try and plot out the shapes that are represented in that geometry column, whether they're polygons, lines, or points, and that's how you get that. So I'm going to wrap this up now. I'd like to um, move on in the next one. We're going to just look at GeoJSON, look at the format, look at how it's structured, and how we read that into GeoPandas. Very similar to this, but I'll just make a separate video so we can look at a different data set as well. We'll move on to advanced things later on. Thank you for watching.